It's time for Fibber, McGee, and Molly. Sundays through Thursdays, NBC brings you Fibber, McGee, and Molly transcribed. The show is written by Phil Leslie and Joel Kane and directed by Max Hutto. The other day, an interesting discussion evolved at 79 Wistful Vista. Like this. Keep off the grass, watch out for children, no left turn, proceed with caution. Playing policeman, McGee? No, I'm counting up the signs I saw on my way downtown today. Between here and the Third National Bank, there must be 30 different signs telling you what to do and when to do it. Well, my favorite one is on the bus. In case of an emergency, break the glass and pull the handle. Wouldn't life be great (laughs) stuff, Molly? If every time we had a problem hanging around, a little sign popped up telling us how to handle it. Well, I can think of some problems that a little planning ahead would take care of almost that easily. Like the one a mother faces if Dad dies unexpectedly while the youngsters are still growing up. That's when a Prudential Family Income Plan steps right in and gives her the help she needs when she needs it most. It's a good plan, all right. And it doesn't cost too much either because it provides that extra protection only during the years the children are growing up. This Family Income Plan of Prudential's provides the money you'd need for food, clothing, shelter, and school. The man that has the complete story on this Family Income Plan is your Prudential agent. Why don't you ask him to drop around and tell it to you? One of the most used appliances in the household at 79 Wistful Vista is an electrical gimmick consisting of two long metal tubes and a small plunger, which can be activated by pressing a button. It sounds like this. Wonder who that is. Well, I don't know, but I've darned enough socks for one evening anyhow, so come in. Well, Les Nelson. Hi, Les. Come in, boy. Hello, Miss McGee. Hi, Mr. McGee. Are you folks busy? Oh, not at all, Lester. Pull up a chair. Where's Sally? Oh, she went down to wind up her Christmas shopping tonight, Miss McGee, so I kind of thought I'd visit you two a while and kind of... Heavenly days. What happened to your leg, Lester? Huh? My gosh, boy, your pants leg is ripped halfway up to the knee. Well, I will be jiggered. Sit down here. Didn't feel like such a big rip when it happened. Well, how'd you do it? Well, I was cutting through the alley a while ago down there back at Fuller's house, and I, <laughs> I fell over an ice can sitting there. Well, now, if that ain't a fine thing. Right in the middle of the alley, huh? Yeah, I, I didn't see it in the dark. I, I really took me a header. <laughs> she ruined these slacks, didn't I? Pretty bad, but they can... My gosh, you could have got yourself a compound fracture, Les. Maybe a broken leg, even. You know, people like that ought to... Here, sit down here, boy. Take your weight off that bad leg. Oh, thanks, Mr. McGee, but it's just skin, is all. You don't want to be too sure about things like that, Les. Might be worse than you think. Let me take a look at that leg. Hmm. Looks to me like mixed abrasions and a slight laceration of the upper dermis. What does that mean? You scratched yourself. Oh, why, that's a relief. Well, now, I wouldn't be too sure, boy. This could cause you plenty of trouble. I knew a guy back in Peoria one time that fell over a wheelbarrow and scratched his leg just about like this. And he didn't pay any attention to it either and just went on with his work. And three days later, his wife ran off with a medicine show. What's the connection there? We were never able to find out. But it sure makes a guy stop and think, don't it? Say, now, it, it, it kind of does at that. Well, I, I'd hate to think of Sally traipsing around the country. Let me kneel down here and get a closer look at that injury, Les. Yeah, better run and get me a hammer and a short nail, will you, Molly? What? Well, don't tell me the bone is broken. No, but now that I'm kneeling down, I can see where that crack on the bottom of the sofa opened up again. I think a short nail might... Forget fix... the sofa. I'll go get some iodine and a piece of adhesive. Won't hurt to put something on that scratch. It's a good idea. By George, that's a heck of a thing to happen to a guy, Les. Just because some joker is careless and stupid and don't care what happens to other people in his alley, you might have got injured permanent. Well, I, I guess the feller didn't mean to leave his ash. Didn't out. mean to ain't the point. The point is you could have broke your leg. Been laid up in the hospital for months. No money coming in. Bills piling up. Sally having to go to work to support herself. Maybe she couldn't find a job. Maybe have to go on charity. And just picture that poor kid in rags. Say, she looks real cute in rags, all right. Uh, Once we went to a hobo party... When I think of you lying there in pain in that hospital bed from an accident that was pure carelessness, by George, that guy ought to be taught a lesson. But I'm not in the hospital, Mr. Yeah, and I'll bet the guy's pretty disappointed about it, too. Here's the first aid kit, McGee. 
And aren't you making a mountain out of a molehill? It wasn't a molehill, Molly. It was an ash can. And we're going to teach that Fuller guy a lesson. I'll go call my lawyer right away, Les. Lawyer? Calvin Clobber. A brother elk. And the best snooker player in town. Old Calvin will handle this case. Oh, McGee, this is pretty silly. Yeah. Gee, Mr. McGee, I don't want to sue nobody. I, I don't... You just relax, Les. Cal Clobber will handle this. The very least you're entitled to is a new pair of pants. Maybe 15 or 20 bucks for grievous mental suffering and everything over that you and Cal can split. For your Christmas bills. But, God... Terrific lawyer, old Cal. You saw that headline in the paper last week. Millionaire gets clobbered with heavy damages in court. Old Cal Clobber handled that. And he'll clobber the guy that tripped you with that ash can. So you just sit there and wait. There's more fun with the McGee's shortly. What have Viceroy's got that other filter tip cigarettes haven't got? What have Viceroy's got that other filter tip cigarettes haven't got? What have Viceroy's got that other filter tip cigarettes haven't got? Yes, what have Viceroy's got? The answer is 20,000 tiny filters in every Viceroy tip. That's right. Inside every Viceroy tip is a vast network of 20,000 individual filters to filter your smoke over and over again. You get only the full, rich taste of Viceroy's choice tobaccos. And Viceroy's draw freely, smoothly. So the next time you hear this question... What have Viceroy's got that other filter tip cigarettes haven't got? You know the answer. 20,000 tiny filters in every Viceroy tip. No wonder more people smoke Viceroy's than any other filter tip cigarette in the world. Get Viceroy's today. King size filter tip. Only a penny or two more than cigarettes without filters. Now everything's fine. I called old Cal Clobber and he's coming right over. Meantime, Les, you just relax, boy. You're in good hands. But, Mr. McGee, I'm not hurt. I, I don't want to... How do you know how bad you're hurt? You may have internal injuries, boy. The kind that are inside where you can't see them. Ah. You wait till old Cal gets here. I'll bet he'll find more serious injuries wrong with you than you can shake an ash can at. He's the type of... If this is your lawyer, he must be jet-propelled. Come in. Hello, Molly. Hiya, Juggy Ears. Him. Hello, Doctor. Glad you dropped in. We've got a patient for you. Hi, Doctor. Oh, I didn't see you sitting there, Les. Something wrong? Oh, I fell over an ash can, Doctor. It's his it... leg, his right leg. Just look at that, Doc. Yeah. Hmm. Does it look bad, Doctor? No, it's just a scratch. I see you've already put iodine on it, and that'll fix it. You better x-ray it, Doc. In color, maybe. Make some sketches. Diagrams to show the jury, stuff like that there. Jury? You don't mean Les is planning a lawsuit. Certainly we're planning a lawsuit. Well, it's only by a lucky break his leg ain't broke. I and Les are going to make an example out of this case. That's what we're going to make an example out. But I'm not hardly scratched, Mr. McGee. I, I don't want to sue nobody. I'm sorry, Les, but this thing is bigger than you are. It's your civic duty to sue the percolator of this careless deed and see that he's brought to justice for endangering the life, limb, and pursuit of happiness of his fellow man. You owe it to the citizens of this community to make our alleys safe for us, the people. What did he say, Doctor? Well, as nearly as I can make out, he's running for street cleaner. Although I can't... That's Cal Clobber now. When he's on the scent of a good case, old Cal's a legal beagle. Come in, Cal. Hello, McGee. Where's the client? Is he in pain? How many witnesses have we got? How many witnesses have they got? Oh, uh, hello, Doctor. You on our side? No, frankly, I'm neutral, Counselor. Just take it easy, Cal. Everything's under control. The victim is over here. And, oh, this is my wife, Molly. How do you do, I'm sure? And I'm neutral, too. Well, where's the... Oh, uh, you're the victim, young man? How do you feel? Well, I feel fine, sir. I, I did... You hear that? Bad nervous shock. Doesn't realize the probable extent of his possible injuries. Honest, Mr. Clobber, I'm not hurt. I, I don't want to bring any trouble to nobody. I just fell over an ash can. I don't think you've got a case, Cal. Of course not. Just tore his trousers. Well, whether or not we bring an action depends, of course, on whose fault the accident was. It was now... no accident. It was practically a prefabricated crime. Criminal carelessness, that's what it was. Oh, anybody could forget. I happen to know the guy that it was in the alley back of whose house the fall was taken back of. And there's not a carelesser guy on this whole block. Oh, is that a broad statement? The only way to teach a guy like that a lesson is to sue. And that's what I'm here for. And the first thing we're going to do right now is to go to the scene of this catastrophe and take some pictures. 
I have my camera and flash bulbs here, and I'm... Well, that's a great idea, Cal. You get a couple of pictures of Les lying on his face in the alley, while Doc bends over him with a handful of bandages, Molly holds a handkerchief to her eyes, and I point to the ash can that tripped him. What? I'll do no such a thing. If that don't have the jury crying all over the judge's robes, I've been listening to the wrong crime programs, and I'm ready to swear... <laughs> Is right down along here, back to Fuller's house. But I, I keep telling you, Mr. Clauber, I, I don't want to sue nobody. What do you mean? you got to sue him, Les. It's the only way to teach a guy like that a lesson. You're hurt. Oh, McGee, Lester is not hurt, and it's ridiculous to carry on like this. He's a specialist of being ridiculous, Molly. You keep out of this, fatso. We'll sue, won't we, Cal? Well, that's up to the plaintiff for injured party, McGee. I'm not soliciting this case, you understand. You called me. I didn't... Where's the ash can, young man? I think we can win this. That's it, laying right over there. Uh, shine your flashlight over there, Mr. McGee. Uh, that's it. That's the one. Ah, yes. Lying in a very dangerous position. I see it has some numbers painted on it. Oh, yes. Yes, we d- we all do that, so we know whose ash can is whose. Mm-hmm. It says, uh, 79 Wistful Vista. Mm-hmm. Well, it must belong to... 79? The... Oh, my gosh. Aha, so that's the owner, huh? What on earth is our ash can doing way down here, McGee? Yours? Gee whiz, uh, I clear forgot. The ash man passed us up this morning and I had to chase him down the alley and I was too tired to lug the empty can home. Sue the man, Les. I've changed my mind. I think you should sue. Oh, now, wait a minute, Doc. It was an accident. I think you should sue too, Lester. Mr. McGee himself said you owe it to the community. Uh, I expect he's kind of changed his mind now, Miss McGee. (laughs) Is it okay if I run on home and have my pants legs sewed up, Mr. McGee? Phew. Yeah, yeah. Run along home, Les. Case dismissed. Let's all go home. Uh, whoa now, just a minute, Mr. We'll say goodnight to Fibber and Molly in a moment. NBC has a present for you. It's that quick-witted man with a mustache, Groucho Marx. Now, don't look for him under your Christmas tree. He's not there. But he is waiting on your radio. And you'll find him tomorrow night here on NBC as he brings you 30 minutes of holiday fun and excitement in You Bet Your Life, the funniest quiz show on the air. There's no telling just what will happen when tomorrow night's contestants meet Groucho, for he's the most irrepressible quiz master who ever befuddled a contestant. But one thing you can count on, you'll enjoy Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. And while we're on the subject of Wednesday evening listening, don't forget there's dramatic entertainment, too, with The Big Story. The Big Story is the popular NBC series that tells you the true and documented story of a reporter's search for a front-page scoop. Hear The Big Story tomorrow night, a Wednesday evening lineup of the best in holiday listening brought to you by NBC. And remember, it's NBC New Year's Day for the Tournament of Roses, the Cotton Bowl and the Rose Bowl. Aren't you glad you didn't talk Lester into filing suit against the owner of that ash can? Yeah. Although, even if he had a suit, he'd have probably lost the case anyhow. A guy as awkward as Les Nelson is wouldn't have had a leg to stand on. (laughs) Now, if you keep leaving that ash can lying around, he won't. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Good night. Good night, all. Fibber McGee and Molly is an NBC Radio Network production transcribed. With Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Gamble, Robert Easton as Les, and Jess Kirkpatrick as Calvin Clauber. This is John Wall telling you that tomorrow night, you'll hear the story about how McGee falls for a bargain photo offer. But as you'd expect, it turns out in a way that you wouldn't expect. Remember to hear it on Fibber McGee and Molly. Join the great Gildersleeve and all his friends tonight on the NBC Radio Network.